So we have um, a grain uh, that doesn't sound much like a grain at the moment, uh, insofar as it's quite long. Usually a grain would be quite a small fragment, uh, but we're able to choose a, you know, a grain of as long as the sound file itself if we wanted to. But normally with granulation, rather than using the selection to determine the start and end points of the grain, uh, you would normally find that the selection is used to determine the start point of the grain uh, with the length being determined by an additional parameter. So we want to uh, create a, uh, a random start point within the limits of the selection that I've made here. Uh, so we do that by means of uh, a kind of random offset engine. A very, um, it's, it's something you'll come across quite a lot and we'll, we'll, we'll use repeatedly for the purposes of this uh, granulator. So first of all I want to, um, if, if I've got limits here and I want to choose a random period or random point within them then I need to establish the size of this range. So to, to do that we use this object which is a bang subtract. I don't know why it's adding that extra stuff on the end, but it is. Oh, maybe I put it in wrong. Bang subtract. There we go. So bang subtract, uh, and basically that uh, inverts the uh, subtract object such that we are taking the first input from the last input, or whatever's sent into the first input from whatever's sent into the last. So we're taking the beginning of the start time from the end, and that, of course, will give us uh, that the range or the um, yeah the range between them so let's put that in as a float again although the random object can only deal with integers of course so we'll use that to define how many random numbers the random object can produce so I'll send that into the right hand side of that Um, and then we need to add an offset which takes those numbers, that range of numbers, uh, sort of adds them to the start point of our, our range and so that the random numbers that come out will always be within the range that we've specified. So we just need a plus object for that. Um, and we take the start point and send it to the right hand inlet of that. I'm not sure how clear this is because it's kind of, I mean, maybe I need to spread this out a little bit. There we go. And then if I make a button object there and there we go. So I choose a range and our random object should now give me a number that is within the range that I've specified. So it's between 684 milliseconds and 1369. It is truncating, as I say, so if we wanted something a bit more precise than this, we'd need to find a way of making random come up with more numbers than that. But for the purposes of what I'm doing today, um, this will be sufficient. So again, it's coming out with numbers between six, uh, the, the two numbers that I've got here. Um, if I change those numbers, then it should give me numbers, again, that are appropriate. If I only click once on here and don't drag, then it will give me a start point which is always the same place. So that could, and indeed is, very useful sometimes. So we've got that, and that, that number can simply be sent to the start uh, point of my, um, my loop points in the groove object. So we can get rid of this one because we no longer need it. Um, but of course our end point is always still going to be the end point of the loop area that we've specified and that's not going to be ideal because our loop is always going to be different length and is always going to be curtailed at the same point. So what we'll do is to add an, for the moment, arbitrary amount to define our the length of our uh, grain, which will be, uh, let's say, 100 milliseconds. And if we add that to the start point, then I guess we're making an offset again from the start point. Get rid of this. So that will give us um, a hundred millisecond grain, 
um, from whatever point that we specify or whatever point uh, the random object uh, specifies within this range that we've set up. Uh, and then the next thing I need to do is to, whenever I trigger a new grain start time, I also need to trigger um, a new grain. So now hopefully we will get 100 millisecond grain anywhere within this period here. As indeed we do. Um, and again, if I, if I choose only one point within that area, so I don't choose a range, then we should get the same sound every single time. Again, as we do. So I could choose a range length that, that goes across the entirety of the sample. And that means that our grain is going to be a different amplitude with each each hit, because of course it's it's taking it from this attack period all the way to where you've got a very kind of low level on the count of the kind of resonance at the end of that sound. Um, so we now have uh, a kind of a random offset way uh, of choosing a sound from within that sample um, and uh, producing a grain. Now I'm going to tidy this up because it is messy, um, but hopefully it's clear what, what I've been through. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this. And I don't think, for the moment, I'm not going to worry about uh, the precise points that we've got there. So if I do that, um, and this, that'll do for now. Okay, so uh, as I say, we've got 100 millisecond grain now. Um, defined by the, uh, whose start points are defined by our selection within the waveform tilde object.